Here I'm going to show how to set up the DNR Airlight radio console for Radiologic DJ. You can go to d-r.nl for more information about the Airlight, and we'll get back to this website in a little bit. Going back to Radiologic DJ, so here's the Airlight here, and there are audio outputs from Radiologic DJ that you can set uh, to modules 4, 5, 6, and 7. So the Airlight is currently hooked up via USB, and if we were to go into System Preferences and take a look at sound here, for the outputs, we'll see that it's added USB audio codec four times, but they all look identical. This is an addendum to the video two years later, uh, where I show how it's actually easier than before to set up the audio out for the Airlight. So with the Airlight, it has the identically named devices, and in the past, in Radiologic DJ, you would have to first set up uh, an aggregate device, audio device, and uh, use the channels 1 through 8 to assign things. That's no longer needed uh, in Radiologic DJ 2018 6.1 and later. Go into the preferences in Radiologic DJ. We have our three outputs. And also new in this version, we have a dedicated output for the palette. So this is very convenient for the Airlight, which has four stereo outs for it. So the first three for the first three players, the last one for the palette. So we can now select each one of these distinctly for the Airlight. So this would be module four, two would be module five, three would be module six. And for the palette, that get, goes to module seven. And then we can rename these. So this would be Airlight four, Airlight 5, and Airlight 6. And then we set each one of these players to be the different modules. And we return back to the older tutorial video now. Okay, so back on the Airlight itself, in order to get the USB audio to come through, we have to actually enable the USB audio up here at the top. And for audio to play through, the module actually has to be on, and the fader has to be up for the audio to pass through. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn the audio on uh, for these four for now. And I'll go ahead and uh, add some tracks here. Uh, you're not going to hear the tracks actually play through uh, because I don't have the air light hooked back up for this video. But you should see it on the meters when I bring a meter up. So we're on... Um, yeah, that played because I played it before. Okay. Uh, if we pull the, the meter up here, we should actually see the, the meter is running and the audio actually playing out to it. And we can adjust the gain on these. We'll bring it up a little bit. We'll put these at uh, 12 o'clock. I'll bring, I'll leave that one down. I'll, I'll leave the main ones up there. And we can actually get a reasonable signal out of that. Okay, so right now we just have the audio passing through. The volume is controlled by the mixer itself. But we can actually set up Radiologic DJ to control the players. So let me turn auto off for right now. Turn that off, let it sit there in queue. We'll go back in the preferences. And in the preferences, go to the USB tab. And we can start setting up uh, how we can start players with the radio console. So what we want to do is give the trigger that what starts player one. And we can make that uh, for module four here, make sure the module is on and a trigger would be, for instance, if we move the fader up for a fader start. Now up here, here's one, something I failed to do. So let me do that real fast. Pick the device. And so we want the air light. We'll assign it, and there it is. Start four, start five, and start six. For down, let's set them up for a sec. Uh, fade down, stop four, 
fade down, stop five, fade down, stop six, and we're all set there. And now we should be able to demonstrate starting this track. So I've got a track in queue here. Let's see if it starts up. And there you go. And if I want to go on to the next track, I could start this next track here, or depending on how you have your preferences set, in general, fade finish other player when manually starting a player here is checked. So that if I start this player, it'll fade down the other one. And you have to pull this back to reset it. With that option off, you could do it more manually. And you could actually start this track, this next track here, and bring this one down yourself and it will stop that player. You can also assign on the palette. So in order to do that, uh, we could say USB learn and we push the button we want on the palette. I'll just do a couple for now. And let's go to a set that has nothing. Come back to the main set, and some of these are actually assigned. So let's see which, which some of these do. That one does that. So I've got these four set up here. These four here are set up to these here. If I started playing it with my mouse, just pressing the button, you'll see the state of the button there changes to indicate that it's playing and it will turn green when it's finished. Likewise, if you start it with the air light, it'll do this, the same exact thing. Looks like I may not have audio in that one. There goes. And that one's actually loaded and working. So that's how you set that up. Now, DNR also provides uh, two pieces of software um, actually, maybe a few, three pieces of software for the Mac, but we'll talk about two. One is the air light control and the air light meters. To get those, you'll want to go to the d-r.nl site, hit downloads, go to software, and you'll want to download air light control and air light meters. So what this will do is it will make it so your control actually goes through UDP, through the air light control, instead of directly through USB. And this allows another program to connect to the air light at the same time, which is their air light meter. So the only real reason to use the air light control and go UDP is if you also want to run their air light meters program. I'm going to go ahead and download load the uh, AirLight control, and then we'll take a look at how that gets installed. Click on its DMG. And we're presented with the AirLight control here. And that if you read the directions for this, it will actually tell you you need to run this command here to disable AppNap. I'll put this in auto for now so it doesn't bother us. You need to run the disable AppNap command uh, before you run the AirLight control. So I've already run this, and the purpose for this is to make sure the AirLight control doesn't go to sleep and stop responding. Okay, so I've already installed these. We'll go take a look at where I've installed these. I have my own copies here. I took the version number off of AirLight Control. So I'll launch AirLight Control. And it gets you a menu bar. It tells you it's running. And then you can go into the settings. And I have it set to use default ports and auto connect. If you use default ports and auto connect, Radiologic DJ will be able to interface with it. So now what I'm going to do in the preferences to get this Radiologic DJ to actually talk to the air light control, what we're going to do instead is we're going to put, pick air light UDP. 
and you may need to actually set this up again. That's taking it right away. All right, let's do um, let's do our starts and stops again. Here's a start. Here's a start. Here's a start, and we'll do the stops. Stop. And now here again, we should be able to start the next track. This one uh, is already started. We'll start this track and fade this one down. So that's all working. I believe you do need to re reassign these if you go from air light to air light. Nope, I guess you don't. Well, that's a good thing. So it takes the settings that you set up on the USB originally and, uh, and applies them even with the air light running. Radiologic DJ won't be able to talk via the directly USB while the air light control is running because air light control generally takes precedence at that point. The other program uh, that they have, and the whole reason for running the air light control, is so that you can run their meters program. So that's right here. And you might put this on a second monitor or something like that. Um, I'll leave it to you um, and uh, as to what you can do with the air light meters program. Uh, this isn't my program. This is DNR's program, uh, but it allows you uh, a clock and some meters and uh, gives you some indication of what the status is of the air light. So I take one down and bring one up. You can see it shows up there as well. And that's basically all the setup for, for the air light.